this group is. It, it's a gathering, it's a conversation, it's a time when we can look at how to be more successful using social media, the tools, the, the, the strategies that go into this. And our, and our goal with this group is to say, how do you generate positive return on investment from doing all this. We're gonna have you build your own social media plan. You're gonna have all the different tools, all the different uh, sections that we believe that you would need to be successful in doing this. And so to that end, we're gonna pass around one of these to everybody. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go get a binder, okay? And it's very difficult. You're gonna take this and you're gonna stick it inside this binder. And then you're going to, throughout the year, just simply insert, maybe it's harder than I think. <laughs> okay, spend a few minutes on this when you get back to the office today. And we are gonna create a social media marketing plan. And, and that's always been our goal is to create a referenceable knowledge base for all of the information that comes out of these meetings because I think we're all overwhelmed with information today. We're, we're forgetting more than we're, more than we're absorbing, and if we don't use it every day, it kind of goes in and goes out. So this is something that's new, and so if you're here every time, you'll have all the things that you need to, uh, to create this plan. If you don't know who you are, and you don't know what the experience is of your brand, and you don't know what you stand for in the world, how are you going to create content that's meaningful and valuable and on purpose and engaging that you can be consistent with? Every business has been flipped upside down in the last 10 years, uh, not, not even just because of the economy, with the way that business has to be done, with the way that we have to engage our clients, what our customers expect from us, what our employees expect from us how organizations are creating tribes as opposed to you know, having people who work for me. Um, the whole world is flipped upside down. And so some of the things that we've talked about in the past as far as changes that have occurred uh, include um, <coughs> the, the change in the control of the message. We're not in control of our message anymore. We're just trying to influence and guide all of those customers and all those people who know us to, to write good things because I can go out and run a blog post about what you did to me and that's now who you are in the world, right? And any of us can do it at any point in time. That is a huge fundamental shift that's never occurred before. One of the ways I think the world has changed things is by forcing companies to say, I'm going to build a more intimate connection with you and I'm going to speak in plain English. I'm going to tell you that I understand who you are, what your needs are, what your challenges are, and we're going to create solutions in your world instead of go sell our product. So what are other values that you can add? You can add human interest if you want. You can add, uh, you can add humor if you want. And, and so you've got to figure out what value you're going to provide. The other thing you've got to do is you've got to decide who you are and what you want to convey out there. What do you stand for? We recently created a, a, a definition for what a brand is. And a brand is a memory bank that's created over time. A good brand is a memory bank, bank that's created over time of positive associations between you and what you stand for and moments of happiness in people's lives. It allows you to be a part of the conversations that your customers are having, um, whereas before it would be a face-to-face, -face, a telephone conversation. Now people are having conversations about your business you know, through social media, Twitter, so it's a good way for you to jump in and be a part of that conversation. Where do you put it, okay? And, and so do you, do you put it on Facebook first? Do you, do you tweet about it first? Do you, do you make a video out of it first? Do you da 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 da? And we are under the contention that all of, well, best practices would dictate that that content, first of all, ought to go on the blog on your website, okay? And that blog ought to be your domain name dot whatever your extension slash blog, okay? It shouldn't be out on some other blogger tool. It shouldn't be a typepad dot something or other tool. It ought to live within your website. And if that occurs, you're going to have several advantages. The first is it's going to create a permanent record of the content that you've created 
that you're in control of, right? If it's on other, some other platform, if it's out there some other place, if it exists some other place, they can change the rules. They can take it down. They can shift how it gets organized. They could go out of business. They could, you know, anything can happen to it. It takes me. It increases the probability of inbound links. Let's say my website becomes known as a resource for these different things and it's out there on the search engines and things. Now people are going to link into my website. That is going to increase my search engine positions. The more inbound links you have from relevant websites, the higher you're going to score on the search engine. So we're achieving a number of different goals by doing this. If we add in sharing mechanisms into our blog, let's say every time I make a post, there's a share this button, right? And so now in my post, people can go and they can email it to a friend, they can text it to somebody, they can share it on Facebook, and all they would do is click the link, they'll sign into Facebook, it will provide the picture, it'll provide a summary of what my post is, they can write about it, and they can share it with their network. So by putting it in a place that has all those features that's set up that way, you're exponentially increasing your content's ability to be found, syndicated, and, 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 and have value to people in the world. Share button, is that something that, that's obviously my web developer has to do that. There is a tool, and, and guys, I would say, take control over this, you know? Get with your web developer and say, hey, should we add share this? And, and that's the word. Should we add share this <laughs> to, to all of our blog posts, to all of our content on our website? How should we do this? And it's a very simple little thing that a person can easily add into any website. And then follow up, and can I add that on Twitter and Facebook, or is it only my web page? It'll be on your web page. Those uh, channels have their own mechanisms for perpetuating content. So this would be something that goes on your website. Yes? Yeah, typically, I, I think there's even a plug-in for WordPress or Blogger. It's just an add this or share this kind of thing. So. What are inbound links? Ah, inbound links are people that are creating a link at their website to you. Okay? So inbound links help your search engine optimization. Outbound links take away your relevance on the search engine. So you don't want to like create a bunch of things going out because you're saying, I'm not an expert on this. Go over there if you really want information. If the whole world were linking to your website, Google would think, this is a good website. We ought to rank it a little bit higher. Uh, another thing about inbound links, though, it, you can also, right now you can write great content, but if people don't know you exist, then they won't be able to find it. So if you can look for opportunities to guest blog, then you've got backlinks going back to your site. And so that's how people find your content, is if you can go guest blog somewhere else that already has credibility, then they'll find your content that way. Then they'll start following you directly. Assuming your content's here and they, and they go over for more on that topic, right? Correct. Very good. That's a great strategy. Yes? Do you think you should just uh, stay with an editorial on a blog? Or the video, add a video, does that enhance it or draw more attention, do you think? Uh, I would say absolutely 1,000% yes. And my contention is going to be that anything that you have of importance to generate, follow these same rules, and even if you're creating a video, put it in a blog post, optimize it, have all those functions and things, and then embed the video, embed the white paper, embed the article, embed the whatever, and use this always as the tool. So, so that's how people sort through information. So you've got to give them the ability to decide what they want to consume from you or not and figure out what you're known for. Then you've got your base of content. Then you're going to start getting it out there to more people. And so the first thing you want to do is share it. You want to get it out to your Facebook, here's what we're working on now. To your Twitter, here's the articles that we posted. Uh, if, if it's visually stimulating or, or interesting like that, Pinterest, maybe you're going to pin this and, and put it up on your Pinterest. You're going to have the RSS feed perhaps on your LinkedIn page. And so now you're going to start saying, okay, let's start disseminating this out there and encouraging more engagement than I would have gotten if I just posted it at my blog, right? How many of you guys go to certain websites all the time and see if somebody posted something new? Few, right? How many of you might use an RSS feed to say, let me know when something has been posted? 
probably more. How many of you would just follow me on Facebook or Twitter and say, if you've got anything new, this is how I'm going to know about it? Okay, a few more. How many of you would say, you know what, I'm on their e-newsletter list, I don't need to do any of those things, they're just going to send it to me each month and I'm going to read it? A few more. So, if I want to reach you guys in this room, what do I have to do? Oh, oh. <laughs> no option, because you're going to pick and choose. And if I don't play that way, you're going to say, all right, I don't need you. I like yeah. to, when I do it from my blog, and it's like four places I'm posting now, I word it a little differently for LinkedIn, for Facebook, for, for Twitter, you don't have much room, of course, you know. Um, even Pinterest now, I take each blog post, and I post it to, I have a board on Pinterest that's going to social media, Twitter, blog. But then I'll also cross-post it on Pinterest, depending on the topic. If it's on Pinterest, the topic of Pinterest, then it goes to my Pinterest blog. If it's on Twitter, it goes to my Twitter board, I mean. Yeah. So I just, and I like to word it just to make it more interesting and to try to angle it a little to who's tracking with me on each one. But I do think you'll get a better response if you were to look at it in that medium and say, I should write it like this. Well, another thing about the summary, you don't want to give the entire story away from your content. You True. want them to come back to your content because yeah. then they'll stay, they'll read other articles, they'll see what you have in the sidebars. Right. So if you give them everything that they can read in an RSS reader, they may never come to your original content. Now you're going to put out your content as, as being a thought leader. Here's new concepts, here's new ideas, here's new trends. Um, it can't just be like, hey, I'm George and I think this. <laughs> It's got to be, here's a trend, here's examples, here's ways to prove it, here's, here's something that a newspaper might want to pick up or that somebody might want to share and say, wow, they're really thinking over there at that place. What are your favorite syndication tools? For which? For disseminating this information. It's I mean, all... like a dashboard or whatever. Oh, you mean on social media. Okay. So basically, you could go through and you could just use share this. Hootsuite is my favorite that is probably in the price range for most people in this room. We also use a tool called Radiant 6, but the buy-in for that is something about $1,000 a month. Uh, now, it's commensurately larger in scope and capability for what it does. Uh, and there are some other ones, TweetDeck, Seismic, uh, are out there. There's a, there's a few others that, that do these things, but what they do is they bring all that content together and make it manageable. And one of the things that they will do is allow you to go shoot them out, you know, uh, to, to schedule things and, and proliferate them across different channels. 835, we're going to do tip groups. talking about back there, the four of us, um, was... It was five until the governor. Arrived. Five, yes, of course, was to keep your personal and your business separate. So in Pinterest, um, when you're setting up for businesses, you're, you're creating boards. And on these boards, you want to make sure that the keywords are um, really relative so that and, and really consistent so that when people are looking for wedding venues or quinceanera venues or anything like that, and if someone just looks for venues, then those things will pop up. So it's the consistency in trying to get your information out as much as possible.